Hello everyone, welcome to GIS Man. I'm Miles Lee. In the last video, we have talked about a FME design pattern called ETOR, which means a combination of workflows including the geometry extraction, the geometry transforming, some spatial and the attribute operations, and finally with the geometry recovery. And based on this design pattern, this video, we are going to talk about another FME design pattern called the least convergency with Python programming. The core idea of this design pattern is to convert the flow-oriented programming into the object-oriented programming, which take fully advantages of these two programming styles. And with the help of this FME design pattern, you can implement the very complex logic with complex algorithms while at the same time keep your workbench clean and simple. So let's take a look on a scenario. So uh, in our art map, we have several feature classes. The polygon in blue, we call it the sensor, which is used to detect uh, how many cars or how many vehicles go by uh, some certain locations. And the key value of this uh, polygon is the traffic volume, which is the count value of uh, how many cars go by such locations. And then we also have the polyline called stop line. Is in red color. It's used to collect a group of the sensors at a certain locations. It's usually in front of the sensors polygon. So what we are going to do is to firstly sum the traffic volume of each polygon per group and we assign the sum value to the polyline in front of this group of the polygon. And then we will also need to calculate the average of the polygons in each group and then assign the average value back to each polygon. So the requirement is like this. Okay, so let's get started to do this. So in our app map, we have several feature classes. The blue polygon is called the sensor, which is used to count how many cars or vehicles uh, go by the certain locations on the road. The key value of the polygon is called the traffic volume. That's what you can see right here. And then we also have the red polyline called the stop line, which is usually in front of each group of the polygon sensor. So what we are going to do is to firstly, based on each group, we will need to sum the value, the traffic volume of each polygon per group and then assign the sum value to the red polyline in front of them. And then at the same time, we will also need to calculate the average of the traffic volumes of polygons per group and then write back the average value to each polygon per group. So this is our requirement. Okay, so let's get started to do that with our today's FME design pattern, the least convergency with Python programming.
So in our FME, just as usual, we will need to have the feature reader to read in our feature classes. So here we will need to have two feature readers. One is to read in our stop line polyline. And the other one is to read in our sensor polygon. Okay. So this one will be the sensor polygon. Yep. And after this, according to the ETOR design pattern that we used in our last video, we will need to firstly extract the geometry for each feature classes and then store them as the binary. So for our stop line polyline, we will need to extract that as the dash geometry stop line. And similar thing for our sensor polygon, we will need to extract the geometry and save it as uh, the dash geometry dash sensor. Okay. And after this, we will need to create the buffer for our stop line. Because what we are going to do is to use a stop line buffer to intersect with our um, sensor polygons for further use. As what you can just see, um, the stop line polyline is not that far away from our sensor polygons. So the buffer distance can be short. And after that, we will need to have some spatial relationship. We use the spatial relator and we will push the stop line. Of course, now it has already become the buffer polygon as the requester. And we will use the sensor polygon directly as our supplier. And the spatial relationship will be the intersections. Okay. Um, the key thing is coming because we will use a design pattern list convergency with Python programming. So we will need to generate a list. And then we will need to put our sensor polygon into the list and let our stop line polyline to hold the list. So we create a list called dash list sensor. Okay. So after that, we will need to filter out some redundant cases by using the count attribute called relate candidates. So I would like to just uh, briefly explain it right here. Uh, in the scenario, we have the um, stop line polyline and behind the stop line polyline, usually there will be some uh, sensor polygons, but in some special cases, we don't have any sensor polygons behind the stop line polyline. So these cases are redundant, are not useful. So we will need to remove that. Now, Python callers coming. This is our key today. Okay. So by far, we have already used the stop line uh, with some spatial relationship to capture the sensors and converge the sensors in the list. So we need to use our Python caller to do the calculations inside the list. That's what we call the list convergency with Python programming. So right here, we will need to write something. Firstly, of course, we will need to get the list which holds many um, sensor polygons. We will need to get that and put it as a array. And 
and after this what we need to do is to because the first thing we need to do is to uh, do the sum of each polygon per group and then we will need to do the averaging for polygons per group as well so we will need to have two variables one is called sum and the other one is called count after that we will have the for loop blocks we will loop through each element in the list okay and we only concern about the traffic volume of the census polygons so uh, we will loop through each element uh, of the traffic volumes of the sensor polygons so for addition sum we will need to sum up our traffic volume for each polygon per group and we will also need to count that okay uh, just briefly explain that so behind each stoplight polylines we have several um, sensor polygons each sensor polygons will have the traffic volume okay we will need to sum up we will need to sum up by group and then we will need to assign this sum up value to the polyline and then after that we will need to calculate the average value for the uh, sensors uh, polygons per group and then write it back to each sensor polygon okay this is uh, what we are going to do i just repeat that so the logic is right here we sum up uh, each element each traffic volume of the sensor polygons per group and then count how many sensor polygon behind the specific stoplight polyline so after this we get the sum value we will write it back to our stoplight polyline we will make a new attribute called sum for our stoplight polyline and write the value of our results we just calculate it back to this um, new attribute okay the feature right here means the stop line polyline the reason is the stop line polyline even though it's already transformed into the buffer polygon um, is used directly as the requester so it's proactive that's why the feature right here represents the stop line polyline okay and after this uh, the next step as what we just said is to calculate the average we will use the sum value to divide it by uh, the count right here and also in another for loop block what we are going to do is to write the value write the value of the averaging back to the sensor polygon because currently the sensor polygon is hidden in our list so what we are going to do is to write the value back into the list okay uh, here we will need to have a placeholder I forgot to write it right here uh, it's called index and then we use a placeholder to uh, point out that uh, each location of the polygons in the list and then for each locations uh, we will need to write our um, I can't say each location each places uh, in the list uh, we will need to write our value our value just calculated back to this uh, specific place in the list so in this case um, elements in the list can also be written okay 
don't forget to self increment the index because this is used to indicate where uh, the pick ball pointing so everything should be fine here don't forget to expose the attribute because the sum attribute and the average attribute even though is in the list of the sensor polygon um, is the created is the generated attribute so we will need to expose it for subsequent workflow so right here you can not only uh, expose the flat attribute we can also explode the attribute that's hidden in the list average okay so we just expose these two new attributes for our output so now we have already implemented the convergence the least convergence and our python programming the last step will be um, the geometry recovery we have already discussed this in our last video it's about the last step of EDOR as well we use the geometry replacer to recover the geometry uh, for the stop line the geometry is this one we will recover it from the buffer polygon back to the um, polyline okay and for the sensor polygon because it's converged in the list it's hidden in the list so before we cover the geometry we will need to uh, explode it by using the leaks exploder okay so we will need to explode the list and we only use the leaks attributes which means that right here all the attributes from the stop line will be wiped out uh, and all the attributes of the sensor even though it's hidden in the list will be exploded okay so after this similarly we can use the geometry replacer to recover its geometry so for the sensor polygon the geometry is called dash geometry dash sensor okay so now everything looks good let's take a look lots of redundant attribute so why not just uh, <coughs> remove the redundant attribute just clean it up this one okay list you just clean every redundant attribute to make sure that we have a good result so finally we will output our results for the stop line polyline we will output it as the stop line polyline result okay stop line result and then similarly for our um, sensor polygon we will output it as sensor polygon result so sensor result okay so everything looks good let's run it
it's done. Translation was successful. So let's take a look on our output. We got two new output. We just uh, disable our old output, okay? Um, for our new output, firstly we take a look on the sensor and then we take a look on our stop line. For the sensor polygon, now what we got is the new attribute called average. So what we can see here is now for each for each polygon within a group, it will have the same value, which is the average value of their uh, traffic volume. So for each group, inside each group, the average value for the polygon will be same. Yeah. There might be a duplication right here because um, the data is not clean. Some polygon is just uh, overlap. So, I mean, that is the bug. But generally, it looks good. Yeah, you see the average, which we calculate by summing it and do the averaging and finally write it back to the list. Okay. So for the stop line, we just simply submit. We just add all the values from the behind sensor polygon together and get the sum value. You can see the sum value is quite big. So which means that the output is correct. You see, this is almost 20,000 traffic volume, which is sum all the sensor poly 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 polygons behind. Okay. So yeah, this is the example and this is a topic for the day. Some people may ask, uh, in this scenario, we are just doing some simple summary for addition and calculating the averaging. Why we need to make the thing so complex and why we need to use the design pattern of the least convergency with Python programming. And other transformers, the normal transformers can do the same thing. Yes, you are right, but please think about this. When the logics become more complex and when the algorithms become more difficult, you need to write a lot more transformers to implement the same things. For example, if I add another condition in the current scenario, which is I just only obtain the traffic volume of the sensor polygon, which is when use more than 500. And in this case, the whole logic will be different. And with the normal transformer, maybe you will need to use the tester firstly to filter out those uh, polygons when values lower than uh, 500. And then you will need to use the aggregate to calculate the sum and averaging. But the geometries are already in the collections. And after that, you will need to use the aggregate or you will need to use the feature merger to get back to the original geometry. That will make your workbench much more complex. And you also need to write a lot of redundant uh, transformers. But in our least convergency with Python programming design pattern, you just need to add another line, which is if the traffic volume for example, more than 500. And then we do this operation. Otherwise, we just pass it. Okay, so you can see that it's so clear. When we use the leads convergency design pattern with the Python programming, everything will become object oriented and it's very easy to deal with different scenarios in different algorithms. So this is an advantage of this design pattern. Actually, I also write the articles about this and I give a lot more cases, a lot more algorithms 
that um, very useful and if you implement that in the normal transformers one by one transformer implementation that will be very complex super complex but however if you use this design pattern you can write almost anything implement almost uh, any algorithms in your python code uh, the code concept again of this design pattern is to transform the flow oriented programming into the object object oriented programming to make the things easier to make your life easier so yeah hopefully um, you can apply these methods to your daily work i guarantee you is very useful okay so um in the next video i will talk about this a little bit deeper i will talk about how to use the two dimension list which means that I will firstly converge the features in the list and then wrap the list in another list which is very powerful to solve uh, the complex scenarios and decide the complex algorithms if you are interested please stay tuned and hopefully see you next time bye